Oh, everybody. Why does D&D have to keep doing this? Let's take a look at Dungeon Craft today. I don't know what this new Drama Llama Ding Dong is, but I'm, I'm assuming... I'm assuming it's AI. That's my guess. I don't know. I just know that's been the the, the point of contention most of the time. This Let's take a look. Sponsored by I love this. Board I love that he does this. Among the dead. Pirate Board, baby. I'm going to be reviewing this soon. Good chance this is going to be my next show. Also, great layout. For all my layout fans in the audience. I'll take some fucking metal pirate music. Let's go. Ooh, sexy. Great video. Hasbro CEO Chris Cox just told a Goldman Sachs conference that he wants more AI in D&D. Do you want a video about it? 81% Hasbro CEO wants more AI in D&D. We explore today on Dungeon Craft. GMs are going to get replaced. I remember when that ad came out. Subscribe at the bell icon. Trying to hire people. the Deathbringer RPG newsletter below. Welcome to Dungeon Craft. Fucked on this one. DM and his channels about all things role playing games. And if that's what you're into, you want to like and subscribe to the channel. This is a viewer's choice. I put up a poll on YouTube, and this is the video you selected. That's the one you selected. <laughs> you want more hard game content? I got the Ultimate Game Master Screen Dungeon Edition coming up next week. Dude, his GM screen, his Lazy Susan uh, gave me the idea for doing uh, my corpse talk at conventions where I have like a huge stand and a Lazy Susan and we play corpse talk together. Oh. So I'm curious to see what this week, is. So tune in for that. Let's get into it. So this is according to I'm drinking. I'm drinking from a Hydro 74. I would like to say it says D&D. Talks about AI usage in D&D. It's Hydro. At a Goldman Sachs event, Hasbro CEO Chris Cox is convinced Dungeons and Dragons will support some sort of AI usage in the future. Speaking today at a Goldman Sachs event, Cox spoke about how AI products could soon support Dungeons and Dragons and other Hasbro brands. Context there, let's click on that. The Goldman Sachs event was called Communicopia Plus Technology Conference, and Hasbro was invited to give a talk at this conference. So that's that's the context. Asked about uh -oh. whether AI has the potential to bend the cost curve and I don't I personally don't have a problem with AI at all actually. I think it's a great tool. I think it can do some really amazing things. I think it can take away some of the minutia of a job and let people have better jobs if it's planned around and used that way versus being used as a scapegoat for ease of completion. I do think it's a great double checker to make sure that things that you may have done in coding and writing are correct. I think it's a great thing to use as a sounding board and bounce ideas off of during the beginning of design processes. I even think for art, it's great to make pieces of art to help a uh, art team understand the style and feel of what you're looking for, because you can tell it the style of art you want and take all the art from your studio. And, and this is a true thing that I've seen in practice in the studio. They take all the concept sketches of what they have. Um, they have this person do, I think it's like a hundred concept sketches over the course, like Gears of War, for example, would be a good way to do it with because they've had a long franchise. They put it all into an AI learning. And with the AI learning, it is able to pump out that style so that people can have reference material for whatever you need in that style. And then the artist goes back and they do all the final versions of it. But it lets the creative director speak to the artist in a visual language. Uh, and it cuts time down because they're taking their database of art that they've already made. I'm not talking about skimming people's art. I'm talking about smart usage of stuff that your company's already done. And then if you're a third-party publisher or a small publisher for tabletop, I think it serves a good purpose as well. I don't think you should publish with AI art unless you are brand new or you say it's in there and your price shows that it's in there. Um, but uh, I don't think it's as bad as it has to be. You know what I mean? I don't think it's bad. 
See ya, bud. Yeah, I know, Blake. I miss you too, man. Um, don't worry, there's a mushroom taking over for you. So I, I don't think it has to be that bad. I really don't. Anyway, back to the video and the recording here. Let's 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 uh get this together. Entertainment development or digital gaming and how it's being used in the content industries. Cox said the following: Inside of development, mm. we've already been using AI. We know it's mostly machine learning based AI or proprietary AI as opposed to a chat GPT approach. I'm given to understand machine learning is AI, that AI is just like- Sort of. For that. Uh, we, what he seems to be indicating- There's different they're, versions of AI. They're using AI, but not chat GPT. They have their own proprietary yep. AI, whatever well, that means. Well, hold, hold on. We will... That means they have the model that is used by open AI, and they're probably taking that model and teaching that model to do what they want it to do. I do the same thing when I am using um, uh, Mem. Um, I can go to my Shadow Dark, right? I can go to my Shadow Dark here and then look up my breachers in Shadow Dark. And then over here, I can type in, give me ideas for things. And it can give me ideas and I can go through and make my version of it. But I can have it reference my piece. I can tell it, uh, can you look through and tell me about Zatatal? And it will do that because it's my information. It's pulling from a bunch of mems or files that I have created, and it's pulling data from those. We'll deploy it significantly and liberally internally as both a knowledge worker aid and as a development aid. That means they're already doing it internally and you're not going to see it because it's internal. You're only gonna see the back end. As a knowledge worker aid to me, mm -hmm. that means they use it to dig for information about stat blocks, monsters, lore. He goes on to say, I'm probably more excited though about the playful elements of AI. If we I look hate at a typical this. D&D player, I play with about 30, 40 people regularly. There's not I'll a single here. person who doesn't use AI somehow for either campaign development or character development or story ideas. We need to do it carefully. We need to do it responsibly. We need to make sure we pay creators for their work and we need to make sure we're clear when something is AI generated. Here it looks like he's covering his bases, right? He he wants to say we are using AI to the investors, mm -hmm. but at the same time assuage fears that it's going to replace creatives. He goes on to say, but the themes around using AI to enable user-generated content, using AI to streamline new... Oh, it scares me that if we... Let's just say they have an AI in D&D Beyond, and we start creating things under D&D Beyond, or whatever their fucking program is called. Adventures, magical items, spells, feats, classes... And if we made it and we touched that at all, and it's any part of it touched the AI generative part, that their AI, whatever it is, that they're going to be able to take that stuff and use it to make money on it. I can see this happening. Player introduction. I'm not saying they're saying that. For emergent story I can telling. see. It. I think you're going to see that not just in hardcore brands like D and D, but uh -huh. also multiple of our brands. Hoffer Wright, I feel like they the coast representative, lost the note. Said D and D is a game made by people for people, as multiple AI controversies have surrounded the brand and its parent company. Wizards updated its freelance contracts to explicitly prohibit the use of AI and has pulled down okay. AI-generated artwork that was submitted to Big B Presents Glory of the Giants yeah. in 2023 after they learned it was made using AI tools. So I did some digging and Cox said back in March, quote, I use AI in building out my D&D campaigns. Sure, I play you're at home. I play three or four times a month with my friends. I'm horrible at art. I don't commercialize anything I do. It doesn't have anything yeah. to do with the work. Yeah, but okay. what I'm able to accomplish with the Bing image or talking to ChatGPT, it really delights my middle-aged friends when I do a Roll20 campaign or a D&D Beyond campaign okay. and I put some PowerPoints together on a TV and call it an interactive map. Okay. This is back in March and he's saying that Back Ooh, then, the Neverwinter Nights. 20 and chat GPT. I enjoyed so running games in Neverwinter Nights. That was available. just because it was something I new. I think he would have been using them back then. If such things exist, they're still in the exploratory and conceptual stage. Like and subscribe. Sure. It really <laughs> helps the channel. Thank you. It seems to be <laughs> they're using AI on the back end to develop their stuff. I think that Which background's painted. 
doesn't really surprise or sculpted. me. I have the Dungeon Craft Facebook group, and people have shared their campaigns and dungeons that have been right. created or in hand. He's not commercializing it, but we have to remember, you know, when, when like, like you said, AW, he isn't commercializing it. But the problem with the AI art sphere is we don't know what it scraped from the internet or where it came from. And that a lot of the artists that are out there are upset because every time we use it, it just scrapes more stuff. But art has been reused for ages and ages for things. And there are really good uh, free use sites out there and things like that. He's doing his home campaign. I don't give a fuck what he does in the privacy of his own home. I, I, that shouldn't have even had been part of this conversation. That doesn't talk. Him taking his personal life, injecting it into a business situation. And granted, he went back to March, I think he said, and pulled this piece about him using it. He may have those thoughts, but it's not directly Wizards of the Coast. So I only want to know exactly what Wizards of the Coast is doing. I don't want to know the rest. Using AI. You ask ChatGPT, hey, create a, a half-sunken swamp temple populated with lizard men, and it'll do it for you. So that may be the type of thing that they are who knows? Using it for using it internally as a knowledge worker aid that to me seems to be recalling information like the stat blocks of monsters or something yeah, yes, like that. Like, kind of great. Hey, give me a displacer beast, and it would do yep, that. And it'll Daniel propagate. Fox, the writer and publisher of Zweihanda, had mm -hmm. this to say: "Human creativity will always be better than AI. People are Correct. the center of the D and D product." I believe so. Mr. Yeah. Cox's that was last are devastating. Last fall and underscore how little he knows about the brand and yes. its audience. D&D is book publishing and licensing in that order. If you ask any major book publisher what do agree with Daniel is about that. AI, they will resoundingly tell you the same thing. AI is not a replacement for human creativity. It isn't. It isn't. It's a sounding board at best. Up a feeling of a big secretary, of the D &D like a audience. data assistant. But of course, I don't know that audience. I don't know what the extent is that people use AI. I've often said on this channel that D and D isn't one game; it's a bunch of games, all mm -hmm. a little different, happening concurrently mm. at the same time. What is happening Agreed, at that my table is not necessarily happening at yours. Right. I have never used AI. Here, Mr. Cox is saying he doesn't know anyone that doesn't use AI. Now, he seems to be playing on virtual platforms. and That's a good Stan question. Reason. Like, how many of the people who are watching this live or, or the recording afterwards use AI for stuff? I use AI almost every day for stuff that I'm doing, but a lot of it is um, code checking or it is um, a sounding board for someone so I'm not just talking to myself and I'm doing game design and I don't have someone to talk to or if I'm, or if I'm in an NDA st situation where I really can't call one of my creative friends and talk to them about what I'm working on because it's NDA'd. I'll use it as a sounding board a lot of times to check my thought process and what I'm doing. And then I usually step away from it and continue my creative process. But if anyone else does, comment down below if they use it for things and how you use it. I know people in the comments are going to get mad. Be nice down there. If you're mean in the fucking comments, you know how I handle shit. Fucking gone. And if he's playing with 30 or 40 of his friends, he used to live in Seattle when he was in charge uh, of Wizards of the Coast on the East Coast now. So if he wants to play with his friends, he's got to do it virtually. Apparently, he's got some some number of groups going at the same time. It strikes me that the the D and D Beyond character generator is kind of a form of hard to find. artificial intelligence, also. And if it could be made more intuitive, how you use it makes it ethical. Tell a machine, I want to create a fifth level character. I want them to be half Tabaxi, half Dragonborn, dual class. Like mine's my own Tabaxi. database. And it could just do it for you in a in a matter of seconds. Would you use it? It seems like to me like that would be the next step. From what I have read, it doesn't seem like I mean, these a, tools. An AI repository of like I don't know, dude. The one good thing I could see out of it, like if I'm not just gonna light Wizards of the Coast on fire like I always do, <clears throat> I feel like an AI repository of everything they've ever made. And it pulls from that with a general database AI as well for like grammar and ideas and thought processes and all that kind of stuff. Being able to use that to go through everything that's ever been made since first edition to compile and make new things or to take first edition models, modules and convert them to 5e or 5e 2024, that would be actually a really cool use of AI for D&D. But I guarantee it's the same thing we've all seen. 
They want AI GMs so that anyone can play without a GM because the thing that they can't make successfully is GMs. Because storytelling isn't an AI's strong suit. Actually exist yet. It's again, it's still in that hypothetical stage, but that may be the direction they're moving with the game. I can offer some insight into why he might say these things. I noticed Mr. Cox has had a very high profile the last couple of months. I saw him oh, on, God. on CNBC. He's on, on this guy's Kramer fucking show. show. Mad Money and uh. the Hasbro brand, which is his job. CEO, you got to go out there and cheerlead. And, and he was talking about all the different brands, not just D&D, but Magic and Pepper the Pig and Transformers and how different generations are now enjoying these brands with their kids and all the different great things that he sees on the horizon. Did you and see the that they're putting transformer model of, money is to hype of Optimus up Prime company. in Goldman their new Sachs VTT? And Goldman Sachs has analysts like, that recommend Like we're playing stocks. fucking Fortnite. Now, just looking at my screen, Bullshit. I can see that a plurality of analysts are rating Hasbro stock as a buy, almost a strong buy. If you look at the one-year chart, Hasbro oh, he's going deep. He's going into numbers. Ago, but a third higher than the November December lows. Hasbro's forward dividend is 280. It's and a lot of that's just him being up front. 15 percent yield, and that means it's a stock that's potentially attractive to dividend investors. Like large-scale pension funds, probably feel comfortable investing in Hasbro. It's a company hmm. that's been around for a very long time. Yes, they had a bad year. Yes, but that serving was after hands. COVID. And now yeah. they're tracking for a gotcha. comeback. Now, of course, it was devastating news last year when Hasbro and Wizards. This was horrible. This is a big layoff that they did that I don't think was necessary. Um, and there were people from Wizards of the Coast got laid off during that. We have some friends uh, within my community of friends they we know got laid off from there. It's just want to be they want to make so much money but they won't keep their fucking employees after they laid off the job. a bunch of their employees fucking dumb. while it's terrible that anyone had to lose their job i understand why mr cox did that they were faced with a difficult decision they had to cut costs some way or they had to cut their dividend now if they had cut the dividend it could have sent the company into a debt spiral where mm -hmm. larger investors pension funds say hey the reason we were investing in hasbro is because of that dividend and they just cut it in half we're going to bail and take our money elsewhere. So now Cox is nope. out there on Jim Cramer. <laughs> he is talking to that audience. At Goldman well, I don't have any Sachs, kids, my friend. And he is trying to assuage investors and try to convince them that they're on the cutting edge of technology. There's always trends yeah, like I mean, stories. I don't in think tabletop needs to be on the cutting edge of technology. It was the meta called tabletop. Like everything was going to be. Meta. Yeah, it didn't turn out. Facebook even that didn't turn out to meta. And if you ask people, what he's still trying to do was, something meta, though. They really couldn't explain. It was like, oh, it's like Tron or something. And then there's crypto. And if you ask the obvious question, like, why is electronic money worth anything? Anything. It's not backed up by a government. <laughs> the answer was always blockchain. blockchain. Cox is out there saying anything to get this stock to move upward. <laughs> and it is working. The street is rewarding and they like what he's saying. Yeah. How will impact play? I'm not really sure. Let me ask you, what type of AI tool I was hoping for something else in this video. Use, but would you not use them? Let me know in mm. the comments below. Also below, there's links to Dungeon Craft Facebook and Patreon. We and he does great work. He does the same kind of two-page spread thing I do. Uh, I, I love his work. I don't think this video was something that really... Uh, brought anything to the forefront personally of what's going on i do think that again I, I don't think that ai stuff has to be inherently wrong um yeah sure um people that just use ai love not to talk about it and very real world impact look i think people i don't think a lot of people understand how it works in general i don't think the people who are making it know a hundred percent the ramifications yet just like we didn't know the ramifications of anything that we've made i mean fucking Ozempic is like ruin organs and shit now. Like we don't know things until you try it. But I do think there should be some regulations put in place. That's all I'll really state on that. I am getting really close in my life to putting politics and religion and AI together as things I don't talk about in a bar or on screen because because of the fight or flight mechanism and people losing their shit about it. But look, there is a spot for it in D&D. The question really is, is Wizards of the Coast going to use it right? They have no track record of ever showing us that they can do anything that is um, good for anybody.
in the last couple of years. Not since OGL. They have fumbled the ball so many times, I don't know if they even are playing the game anymore. And from OGL on forward, for the decisions that they've made, the plethora, I, sh I wish I could just go boom, 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 and have them all fill on the screen. Because the mistakes they've made over and over don't haunt them long enough because we don't let it haunt them long enough. I still haven't bought the Player's Handbook 2024. I have a paid game coming up here where I'm going to be running uh, 2024 and I don't own it. Um, I'm tempted to put it as part of the price of me running the game to buy the book because I really don't want it to be my money. I don't... I have friends that worked on the project, but nothing about it is exciting to me or universally new. And the AI disclaimers everywhere that people put and whatnot are great. The thing is, is there's no transparency on how any of this stuff actually works. Like at the end of the day, no matter what the topic is, if there isn't transparency in testing and use application, have it be a program, a new tool, new science, unless there's transparency and records you can look at and see what it does, at the end of the day, it's all a lie and nothing good is going to come out of it. Um, I do enjoy using it, like I said, as an assistant, and I think there's some good stuff, and I've trained my own AI with my own documents and using PDFs of, of written stuff to make sure I'm writing the same style and not missing how stat blocks are made and things like that. So there's a lot of people who don't like AI out there, but I don't think it's Skynet, everybody. We're not there yet. Uh, I do think it needs to be watched, and D&D is not the person I want to be the watcher. But that's it on this. Because we all know wizards won't do it right. We know. We know they won't do this right. That the wall garden they create full of probably my voice and other fucking watch fate. Watch, look at Matt Mercer's voice and take it all. Or Brennan Lee Mulligan. And all of a sudden he's your GM at a table because they're using AI to do it. That's the stuff. I think we're going to see and they're going to blanket it as a entry level to D&D &D, where people can come and play with their own GM of a famous person. So tiring. If this is a video you've watched, don't worry, around me there's going to be a bunch of other things to watch that are way more fun and enjoyable from reviewing zines that have came out from game jams to actual plays that I've done or the subscribe as we try to hit 500. Down below, be friendly. Leave comments on how you use AI, how you look for ethically sourced AI, how you maybe use it in your tabletop RPGs, because that's the things we're here to talk about. If you're live, stick around. We're going to go into doing something fun. If you're watching this recorded, thank you so much for joining me. Hit that subscribe button, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.